Hi, I'm Mark with the North Shore Commercial Door.com. Today we're going to have a little tech demonstration, and our demonstration today is the gear replacement kit for a Chamberlain Group Operator. So if you see uh, what's on the table today, here's the chassis, the operator, here's the uh, here's the star sh the show, it's the gear kit. This is a motor. This is a uh, gear kit, and when you buy one of these and we ship it to you, it's going to come in a bag. It even has the uh, directions. Now, for our purposes, I know we're going to have a lot of men working with us today, so I'm just going to throw these things away because no men really use those. Seriously, the, uh, the directions are very well written, and there's uh, three or four different variations of operators, so you'll need the directions to identify which one you have and then how you want to attack it. But the first thing that you're going to need is some tools. I found a uh, pair of needle nose pliers, a couple of different uh, nut driver sets, and a uh, screwdriver. The directions again will will tell you what you should have and they'll give you the sizes of the nut drivers and what have you. So today we just happen to be working on a Sears Craftsman, but uh, once the cover comes off, it's uh, pretty typically a uh, generic Chamberlain LiftMaster product. So we're going to uh, first disassemble it. Okay, now what we've done here in preparation for this, we've taken it down from the garage ceiling. We've removed the track and chain from it. So all I've got here is the operator head. So the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to remove the cover so that we can get inside to the working parts of here. Now the directions are going to give you a step-by-step -step process. There's two or three different variations of these motors depending on where they were in their lineage. The directions will first tell you how to identify which one you have and then it'll give you specific step-by-step -step instructions on how to take it apart. So what we're going to start with here is we're first going to remove the limit switch assembly. And that happens by unsnapping the limit switch from where it's held and that then can just traverse out of the way the wires are going to hold that. And the next thing that you're going to do is we've got some wires connecting the motor to the uh, various harnesses. We're going to remove those because this whole motor and assembly is actually going to lift out of here. So I'm going to start pulling the wiring couplings off of here. Okay, now the wiring harness is completely free so that when we release the motor, we'll be able to take this right apart. Now there's four self-tapping screws that hold the motor to the chassis. I'm just using a nut driver. The motor now just about ready to release. On the top of the limit assembly here, there is a retainer clip that holds all of that in place. The gear itself will slide off the top, and at this point, the motor itself will completely come off of the unit. Now, while we got the motor in hand, we'll show you what we're gonna do there. You notice there's three screws that hold the frame. And so we're going to remove these. It's called an optical locator wheel. That'll just pull right off the top. Now the entire motor assembly will lift off. On the top here, there's a bushing. And on the holding the bushing and everything on, 
is a snap ring, thrust washer, and everything that you need to hold that in place. Once you've got that off, the gear itself should slide right off of the shaft. As you can see there's a pin running through the shaft and the bottom of the shaft is keyed. So you pull that off and you are now ready to get into the new gear kit that came with it, get the new gear out and put it in its place. Now back over here on the chassis, the gear kit itself is still here and you'll notice there's three self-drilling screws that hold it in place. So we will we will release those. Alright, the last of those fasteners just came out and the old gear kit will pull right out of the bottom of it. Now these are the two gears and the, the two gears for our demonstration purposes are not damaged in any way. In fact, they're, uh, they're hardly even worn. But the reason that you would replace this gear kit to begin with is over time, these will wear down. Sometimes they get brittle and they will break. If you uh, go out and hit the uh, start button on your operator and you uh, hear kind of a buzzing or a ratcheting sound out in the operator like things uh, malaligned, you've probably uh, had a failure of the gear kit. One of the easiest ways to determine that is to take the cover off of the bottom of the operator and you will probably find that there are uh, plastic shavings or bits that have uh, fragmented and fallen off these two gear assemblies. So when that happens, you've had a gear kit failure and it's time to replace the gear kit. Again, the uh, process is uh, not all that difficult. I'm not a mechanic. I'm a homeowner just like you. And uh, as you can see me fumbling with these screwdrivers, I'm certainly not uh, good at uh, mechanics, but uh, I got it apart here in probably uh, eight, nine, 10 minutes. Now that didn't include the prep time to get it ready, but it really wasn't very difficult to get it apart. So put it back together, we're going to just reverse the process. And, and again, the directions that come with it are very important. They're going to give you a step-by-step -step direction on how to, how to take it apart as well as how to put it back together. Make sure when you put it back together uh, that you lube it up good. The uh, gear kit comes with a complete set of lube with it. So, so what we're going to do now, I've already taken the old uh, unit apart so we're gonna we're gonna start on the reassembly. Here we have the motor. We've already removed the gear. This is the new gear. You'll notice that there's a slot in the end. That slot is going to come in contact with the pin that goes through the shaft. So we've seated that in place. The pin is sticking through so it's gonna make positive um, connection. Now we're going to put the motor bracket back over the top. Okay, you see three studs have now come into view. So we're going to tighten down these and now the motor bracket is now reattached. Okay, now we've We've tightened down the three fasteners on the motor bracket to the motor. Now there's a bushing that maintains the alignment of this. There's a thrust washer, a spacer washer, and a cap. Okay, now you want to put a little upward pressure on the shaft while pressing this down in a slot will come into view and there's a snap ring so we're going to put that snap ring on here okay now we've got the uh, gear put back on the motor the motor bracket on 
We're now going to put the uh, gear kit back into the system. So you do that by lining up these three holes. Just gonna lightly tighten those till I get all three screws in there. Alright, there's no torque settings on those, so I'm just gonna snug them down so they're good and uh, good and tight. Now it's time to put the motor back in. Four more screws are going to hold the motor in. Again, there's no torque setting, so I'm just going to make sure they're good and snug. All right, now motor's back in. There's a gear that goes on top of the shaft, and that is designed to dry the limits assembly and then there's a pin that goes through it and there's a clip that clips on there and holds it all nice in place all right now when we took it apart in order to move the motor we disconnect some wires so we're now going to go back in there and we're going to put the wires back on the terminals that they came off of let me use a pair of Needle nose pliers for that. We've got to put the optical locator wheel back on. That goes on the back side of here. Just snaps on. And the limit assembly, the which took off in the initial application to make sure we've got a good alignment and then we're going to snap this back into the chassis and that is done okay that puts the gear kit back in just the way it came out and uh, while I'm not going to do it here today, we got a tube of grease with that. You'll tear the top of the grease off and you want to apply grease liberally to the main drive gears, the worm gear coming out of the motor as well as the uh, limit assembly. The, the more grease you put on there, the quieter it's going to run and the uh, less you're going to have to maintain it over time. So that's essentially it. Now. Uh, for the purposes of our demonstration today, I only, wanted, I only wanted to show you how we replace the gear kit. The directions obviously are gonna tell you how to put it back together from now. You're gonna to have to attach it back to the rail, put the chain back on, which will go to the uh, top of here, and then there's a cover that goes on there. But that pretty much takes care of the, uh, the, the gear assembly, and I'm thinking that uh, I had about uh, 15 minutes taking it apart and about another 15 minutes putting it back together and uh, as I said, I'm not, a, uh, I'm not a mechanic, I'm just a homeowner like most of you and I didn't find it too difficult to do. If you have any questions about the gear kits, feel free to give us a call and uh, we'll help you out in any way we can. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video from NorthshoreCommercialDoor.com. Please subscribe to our channel so we can continue to make content like this. Thank you.